LearningMeasure.tv A science and engineering podcast with emphasis on measurement brought to you by David Archer and LearningMeasure.com Episode 52 Triangulation Hello, uh, I'm David Archer, owner of LearningMeasure.com and LearningMeasure.tv LearningMeasure.com is a subscription-based training service where you can get access to all the courses in the course catalog for a subscription fee of $5 a month or, $10 or $60 a year for access to all the courses in the catalog. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a podcast. Since the last time courses added to the course catalog have been Instrumentation 405, RF and Microwave Power Measurement, Instrumentation 406, Introduction to the RF Mixer, and Measurement 141, Introduction to, introduction to Humidity Measurement. Uh, the subject of this episode is triangulation, which is concerning, concerning the determination of a uh, position of an object in space by measuring two angles at, from different points of view. It has its roots in trigonometry, the study of triangles. Uh, so we'll start out by talking about the triangle. But before we do that, the triangle implies three angles, but before that we need to talk about three individuals. Uh, one individual that's important in triangles is a, a guy by the name of Pythagoras. He lived from about 570 to 495 BC. Uh, he knew about the theorem that has his name, the Pythagorean theorem, but we also know historically the Pythagorean theorem was known well before Pythagoras uh, by the Babylonians and the Indians. Um, and he may not have been the first one to prove it, so we, we don't have any of that information with us. But we'll talk about him in a minute, his theorem in a minute. And then there's another guy, historically, uh, another ancient Greek guy, Aristarchus. He lived from 310 to 230 BC abouts. He was actually the first that we know of in history to suggest the heliocentric theory of the solar system, that the sun is the center of the solar system. And the other thing that was interested about this Aristarchus character is he was able to measure the distance of the sun relative to the distance of the moon, which is an important thing to do, but the problem with that is if you don't know the distance of the moon, you can't figure out the distance to the sun. And last person in history that's important in regards to triangle is a guy by the name of Hipparchus. He lived from after those two, 190 to 120 BC. He's considered the father of trigonometry. He was a famous astronomer. He may have invented things like the astrolabe, and he had the, the um, first uh, star catalog that we know of. And he did measure the distance to the moon. And you got to, well, how did these ancient Greek guys do it? Well, they did it through basically triangles and trigonometry. So we'll start out by what's a triangle. A triangle are three straight line segments connected at their endpoints. These connections form three angles, that's the name triangle. For purposes of this episode, uh, we'll put labels on the sides A, B, and C. And then, like is common, we're going to use the letter, Greek letter theta to represent an angle, so we'll add a subscript, and we'll call the angles theta A, theta B, and theta C as the angles opposites the sides A, B, and C. Another thing to remember from geometry, the sum of interior angles of a triangle summed 180 degrees, or pi radians. Uh, that's something that's important for triangulation. So let's talk about next uh, the, the right triangle. The right triangle is a triangle that has a right angle in it. Right angle is something that's 90 degrees or pi radian or pi over 2 radians and it's half of a straight angle. So if this line were to continue there are two right angles in a line. So, anyway, so again, we're going to label these sides A, B, 
and C. And, of course, if you remember the Pythagorean theorem, it's a, it's a theorem about the size of a right triangle. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Well, this is going to be a sort of a review before we get to triangulation itself. Now, if you have this angle here, and we're going to label this uh, theta A, this angle here, there are trigonometric functions that are defined for a right triangle. And so, for instance, the sine of this angle, of theta A, it's equal to A over C. Looks like a 9. So, oh, by the way, this side, the long side opposite the right angle, is called the hypotenuse of a triangle. So, the sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. The cosine of theta A is equal to B over C, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. One can also define the tangent of theta A, which is equal to the sine of theta A over the cosine of theta A, which is equal to A over B. So those are the three main trigonometric uh, functions that you could get from uh, the definitions from a right triangle. You can combine the two. If you look at this a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and divide this equation by c squared. So you got a over b squared, or sorry, a over c squared plus b over c squared equals 1. Well, we already know that A over C, A over C is the sine, B over C is the cosine, so we get our first trigonometric identity, cosine squared theta A plus sine squared theta A equals 1. Okay, that's, that's about all there is to say about the right triangle. Now, what do you, what, when you have all this information, what can you use it for? Well, this Aristarchus character, uh, who was, actually, was after Pythagoras, so he knows about Pythagorean theorem and basic triangles, he decided he wanted to figure out how far away the sun was. And the first thing, he, what he reasoned was, OK, you have the Earth. And you have the sun somewhere out here. Yeah, great art here. And you have something like the moon. Well, he reasoned that when you saw the moon, when you had a half moon, which mean, that would mean that if you looked up at the moon from here, you're sitting on the earth and you're looking up at the moon. If, if you see a half moon, it must be the case that the angle between your line of sight and the sun must be a right angle. Okay. So if that's the case, if you can look at the, if there's a time of day when you have a half moon in the sky and you can see the sun, all you have to do measure this angle, we'll call this, uh, so this will be, this side will be A and this side will be B, so this side will be C, this is the hypotenuse and this side's A at B. Uh, you can, if you know this angle here, um, you know the, the uh, cosine Of, of this angle theta, different A's, B's, and C's, 
Uh, I guess from our drawing before, I guess you really wanted this to be this to be B and this to be A. Okay, from the from this drawing from our drawing before. So co cosine theta is going to equal B over C. It equals. So all you have to do is if you want to know the distance the sun C, it's going to be B over cosine theta. So what you've just done is expressed the distance of the sun in terms of the distance to the moon. So whatever this 1 over cosine theta, it tells you how many times further away the sun is from the moon. Just from doing, just from knowing some basic uh, things about triangles. Now, he didn't, his answer wasn't particularly accurate because at his time they didn't have all that accurate uh, angle measurements, and we'll talk about that in a, in a bit. Um, so then a, he, you had to wait until you knew the distance of the moon to get the distance of the sun. Now think about this. This is, you know, like 200 BC. The Greeks already knew the Earth was a sphere. Uh, they suspected the sun was at the center of the um, solar system, and they had some idea of how far away the sun is and the moon were. So, I mean, it's, then we lost that until Copernicus, basically. So, we're going to talk about another thing that, that tr that's true of triangles called the law of sines. We're now we're going to talk about the law of sines. The law of sines is a statement about triangles in general, not just right triangles. Uh, what, 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 so we'll go back to just write a general, any old triangle. And we'll label the sides A, B, and C. Well, what can you say about the angles here? Let's say here, this is theta B, this is theta A, and theta C. Well, forget about theta C for a minute. If you drop a line perpendicular to the apex, to the base of the triangle, and we'll just call its height H, we don't know what that is yet. In fact, we don't need to know what it is for what I'm going to calculate. It must be the case that sine of theta B by definition, is going to be h over a. Similarly, the sine of theta a equals uh, h over b. So let's multiply this top equation by A and the bottom equation by B. You, have, uh, you get A sine theta B uh, equals H. And this one you get B sine theta A equals H. So now you can equate the two, right? A sine theta B equals B sine theta A, because they're both equal to H. And then we just do divide both sides by AB, and you get sine theta B over B equals sine theta a over A. Well, you can do repeat this argument for the other side, and you'll find out for this triangle, this is also equal to sine theta C over C. 
So this is the law of sines, which is the sine of an angle over the length of the opposite side is a constant for a given triangle. It's e so the sine theta A over A is equal to sine theta B over B is equal to sine theta three C over th C. So what can you do with that? Well, in general what you do is this is an old surveyor's technique. And in fact, it is still a surveyor's technique. So if you have some distant point, P, we'll call it, but you want to figure out where it is and you can't go there, and uh, you, have a cup, you have a couple points on the ground separated some distance you know, D, and you can sit here and look at that point so you know this, what this angle is. You measure this angle. We'll call this, um, well, let's, let's draw the full triangle. Well, we'll call the distance A, just to keep our notations the same. So this is the, the known distance called the baseline. That's, where the, that's the, uh, where the term baseline comes from. It's from a, a, a line, you know, the, the distance two that you're going to use to measure a distance point. It's the baseline. It's the basis of your survey. So you have these two angles. You can, you can measure this angle. You can look in that direction and say, ah, this is this angle. You can do the same thing over here. So you got these two angles. So what you know is you know this side and you know the two angles. Well, if you wanted to know what these other two sides, you can use the law of sines, right? You know sine uh, theta A, which is this angle up here. Now this is the key. Since you know these two angles, you know that you know that theta A plus theta B plus theta C is 180 degrees. So if you know these these two angles, you know that angle. So you know all the angles. So it's the case that sine theta A over a equals sine theta b over b. Well, the only thing you don't know is, is in this particular case, is b. So you have b equals um, a sine theta b over sine theta a. Similarly, C equals um, A sine theta C over sine theta A. So just by knowing the law of sines, uh, you now have these two distances. So you know all three sides of the triangle now. Now, There is a, uh, some uncertainty associated with that measurement, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But what do you use? How did? How would you use this? Well, there is this guy that we already talked about before, Hipparchus. He observed an eclipse. So somewhere on the Earth, he observed. A, he was sitting on the looking up at the sky, and he, there was the moon, and there was the sun, and he saw a total eclipse at, at this one location. So, must be the case so he knows that he knew this angle already. Um, this is going to be a straight line, but uh, and then he, know, he knew a, f a little while further away, in another town, it wasn't quite a total, total eclipse. He could see part, they could see part of the sun. Well, that must be the case then. You know, it's hard to draw this freehand, but 
So this guy saw a total eclipse. This guy saw a partial eclipse. Since he knew how much, what fraction of the sun, just looking at the partial eclipse, he could figure out what this angle was. Well, because of the geometry, because of how far away the moon is, you can basically say, well, this side is approximately equal to this side, and this angle is approximately equal to this angle. So if you know this angle, you can figure out what these two angles are, just because you know the sum of the interior angles of a triangle. When you know this distance from the law of sines, you can figure out this distance. And that's what he did. He came up with, uh, he, using that, he came up with the distance to the moon. Um, it was not bad estimate. It was certainly not bad for the instruments he had at the time. But you did know, he did know it was very far away compared to the radius of the Earth. And from the Aristarchus' uh, observations, you can then figure out how far away the sun is. So that's pretty amazing for these uh, um, the ancient Greeks. Okay, now we have the law of sines. Well, how accurate is it? Well, we're going to do a, a kind of a quick uncertainty analysis. We're going to have a triangle. Again, you have your baseline. A, and two unknown sides and two angles. Theta C and theta B. Okay, from the from the uh, form, let's just say the uncertainty in theta B or in B. So B again is equal to A sine um, theta B over sine theta A. Well, a technique that you can use to determine the uncertainty, and let's say we're going to say B is some function of three variables, A, theta B, or theta A, and theta B. And this is that function. Well, the uncertainty in B are, is one estimate will be square root of the derivative, the rate of change of this function of b, this function, with respect to a, times the uncertainty in a squared. And this is what's covered in previous podcasts. df d theta a squared delta theta a squared plus df d theta b squared delta b theta b squared. Okay. I guess you can't see that very well. I'll, it'll be on there on the screen after I edit this. So let's do that. db dA is sine theta a over sine or sine theta sine theta b over sine theta a. So this term first term is this squared. The derivative of this with respect to theta b is going to be cos, uh, cosine over a, so plus a cosine theta b over sine theta a squared delta theta b squared plus the last one's going to be a sine theta b over sine squared theta a times cosine theta a um, delta theta a. Well, this further, this term can be reduced even further because this cos sine over cosine is tangent. So this is equal to a, a sine theta b over sine theta a 
1 over tangent theta a. And we out this is equal to this. So this is last term is equal to just b over tangent theta a delta theta a squared. So b, the uncertainty in b is the square root of this whole thing. So what does this uh, look like? Well, you can simplify this a little bit. This is going to be equal to b over a, right, because this times a is b, so this must be b over a. So we got b over a, which we have already calculated. This one you can, well, I'm not going to simplify that way, but you get kind of the idea. Uh, but what's interesting is this term here is this term 1 over, at, at, at some point, tangent theta a equals 0, and that term goes to infinity. So um, at some point, when that angle gets really, really small, so, so the point is very, very far away, the uncertainty grows and grows and grows because the angle gets smaller and smaller. So if it's really far away, you really need more and more accurate angle measurements to get an accurate answer from triangulation. So given the crude angle measurements, you know, the distance from the moon is it's far enough that that angle is really, really small. So uh, it's not surprising that, actually it's more surprising that Hipparchus got as close as he did with the instruments that he had at the time. Um, anyway, that's, that's triangulation. Uh, amazing what you can do with triangles. Uh, that's it for uh, this episode. Um, you know, this, this episode was, was made at the request of one of you out there said you wanted to uh, podcast about this. Uh, it also covers some uh, uh, material from covered in more detail that was covered in previous podcast. So if you want me to cover some topic, uh, any topic at all, just uh, send me an email at suggestions at learningmeasure.tv, and I'll uh, look for look for you know I'll work on putting up together an episode. Uh, if you have any, uh, um, if you want to be on the show, you want to be interviewed. Uh, send me an a email at vendors at learningmeasure.tv. Uh, also, you can get us at Facebook. We're under, uh, under Learning Measure and Twitter under Learning Measure. And uh, we are thinking about starting to do a Skype talk on a regular basis if you're interested. Um, just uh, send me uh, a message, any of the poss many possible ways you can get a message to me. Uh, that's it for this episode. We'll see you next time. Thank you.